Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus, and today we are going to go over creating the hair. So right now I've already finished the model, and uh, what I'm doing is mirroring the geometry so that it is one piece. And I also wanted to show you really fast how to create eyes. So right now her eyes are just spheres, and what I did was assigned a ramp to the color and just basically made sure that it was a U ramp instead of a V ramp. It's a very quick way of making eyes. This helps make her look a little bit more human and alive, and therefore it makes things a lot easier. Now you're gonna recognize that she already has hair. So very similar to the hand, I already had hair from a previous model that I built earlier. So what I did was just import the top of the hair. But what I'm gonna demonstrate to you guys today is I'm gonna be creating her ponytail and her side hair as well. And then alter the geometry that I currently have to make sure that it looks good. All right, so right now I'm creating a cylinder and very similar to what I've done with the arms and the legs, I'm just grabbing every single row of vertices and then scaling it and moving it. Um, I'm also rotating the bottom tip so that it's gonna be facing the correct angle when I start extruding. So another thing you'll notice is that I'm going into the side view and this time I'm, I did an isolate selection and same story where I'm just scaling and moving on one direction. Once I have that shaped up, I'm going to go ahead and add some edges to make sure that it's got the best mesh that I possibly can. And of course, you always want to make sure that every single time you add edges, you manipulate it. Now I grab the bottom edges and I'm extruding and I'm following the normal, rotating it and scaling it until I have that cute little tip at the end. So this is a pretty simple way of creating hair. Uh, the hair that I did for the top of the head, I used derbs. I will show you guys in another tutorial, but I basically created curves, did the shape of the head, and then converted them into polygons. So I duplicated it, the new strand of hair to the other side revolved it, and now I'm tweaking it because it should not be the exact same hair on the left side as it is on the right. So I'm going to go ahead and manipulate it as well according to the concept art. I've also noticed that uh, she's missing her ears and that's gonna be really important. So what I did was isolate the head and I'm going to grab some faces to be able to extrude. Of course, I'm gonna be using my reference, so I'm selecting a face and I'm going to start shaping it. Now her ears are pretty cartoony and very simple. I actually do have a human ear that I uh, use when I'm creating photoreal, but because she's uh, so cartoony, I'm just gonna go ahead and drive the ears with, the te with texture. So this is gonna be a very simple ear. So right now I am uh, ex selecting the faces and extruding. It's a little cubic, but notice that once I smooth it, it's going to be okay. So what I'm doing is extruding and I'm bringing it in, scaling in a little bit, extruding again, and that will give me a little bit of a shape. So right now she looks like an elf, so now you guys know how to make an elf. So, but that's an easy fix. Again, I'm gonna isolate from the front view. I'm gonna grab some edges and some vertices and bring them in. Ears are, are pretty challenging. Um, when I created my first ear, it took me hours upon hours upon hours to create my, my human ear. So now I use it for everything. Now I wanna make sure I get the correct shape. So I'm scaling inward and uh, use reference when you're creating your ears on any type of anatomy. All, using reference is always key. So now it's starting to look a little bit better. Uh, it's a little bit shaped. I'm gonna add an extra edge because I really need a couple of extra edges so that I can shape the air a little bit better so it's not so cubic. And even though I added some edges to, uh, to the head, I'm gonna have to fix that as well. But right now I'm just focusing on the ear and this is gonna help make her ear look a lot nicer. There you go, it's already starting to look better. So again, it looks a little plain right now, but what I'm gonna be doing later is gonna be texturing the ear so that it looks like an ear instead of just a plane. I'm adding a couple more edges to make sure it's got a little bit of a shape. And uh, what's interesting about ears is that they're very complicated. They have all of these crevices and, and of course it's got that inner uh, tunnel. So it's about trying to figure out what is the best way to get the shape that I'm looking for. All 
I'm not an ear expert, so I can't tell you all the names and anatomy pieces of uh, of it, but uh, I'm adding extra edges just to make sure that you get that, li that little lip in the ear. So don't forget that this is considered a stylized ear. It's not really a photoreal ear. There's a lot of tutorials out there on how to create uh, a photoreal ear. I will probably do a tutorial of it some other time, but, uh, but they're pretty complicated. They take a lot of time, but uh, they're also really, really important. Very similar to the hand, you can always just reuse it. So again, every single time I'm working on my model, I'm always tweaking it, trying to make it better. And those are the extra edges that I created because of the ear. So now I'm fixing it, uh, making sure that everything has a nice grid flow. So it, uh, if there's any type of deformation, I'll be able to tweak it. So now that I created the ear for her, her left side, I'm going to go ahead and mirror the geometry so she has an ear on the other side. So now I'm following along with the reference picture. Of course, there's always tweaks that I can use to make it a little better. A lot of her skull is going to be hidden by the hair, but at least now she's got ears and therefore I'll be able to manipulate the geometry so that it fits her well. All right, the next part is going to be the ponytail. So uh, I'm going to start off really simple because I want to make sure that I can just manipulate the geometry. So what I did was I only need the top of the cylinder because I'm going to be extruding uh, from a curve. So I'm reducing it, I'm shrinking the scale, and I'm placing it based on the reference. So I'm going to use an EP curve tool. Once I have that, select the face, select the curve, extrude. And you want to do what's called increase the divisions. So now increasing the divisions and uh, manipulating it. And you can also what's called tapering. And when you taper it, it's going to give you the nice little tip at the end. Uh, it looks a little weird right now, but I've got the mesh. I have enough mesh to go ahead and start manipulating. So now I'm scaling it and I'm scaling it uh, uniformly. Instead of just grabbing one area, I'm scaling it uniformly because the ponytail is going to be that particular thickness. So that's a quick way of creating a ponytail. Um, again, I'm just scaling right now and I'm going to manipulate it later, but right now I'm just trying to get the shape of the side view. Did you guys know it was that easy to make a ponytail? All right, so you are going to get a little bit of bad mesh and that's okay. Uh, so a lot of the times tools will get, will get you about 80% of the way, but then you're going to have to tweak it. So right now I'm just trying to tweak it to make sure the geometry is proper and it flows well. So I know that they've got some loose faces. I'm trying to rotate the edges so that it'll be easier to manipulate and it doesn't look so janky. So I'm just rotating the camera to see what is going on and I'm deleting the history, deleting the bottom face, and I'm going to start manipulating it, making sure that it shapes well. All right, so I went ahead and moved it into the head and I'm using the front view to start shaping it according to the reference. And I'm also using a perspective window because even though it looks good on the side view, I definitely want to make sure it looks good on all views, inclu including perspective and the front view. All right, I'm going to create the hairband by selecting particular faces and extruding and manipulating, just scaling it down a little bit just to give me a little bit of a shape. It, I smooth preview it to see how it looks like. I will add a couple extra edges to make sure the shape remains where it is. Press 3 to see how it looks like, and now it's starting to look a lot better. By the way, I'm still tweaking the hairband. As you can see, the geometry was not very well done, so now I have to clean it up. Now there's extra mesh to worry about, so I should have fixed that before I did it. So learn from my mistakes and uh, just make sure that uh, your mesh is clean and looking good before you start extruding. But uh, again, the nice thing about 3D is that it's an easy fix. You just have to go in, grab some vertices, manipulate it, and uh, make sure that it looks good. And that is a quick way of creating a ponytail, the side hair, the ears, 
And after that, it's just manipulating the geometry. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Thank you so much for listening. I really appreciate it. I hope uh, you uh, are going to be building some beautiful characters and I can't wait to see them. So, uh, so don't forget to subscribe to my channel, share my videos with your friends, uh, follow me at academicphoenixplus.com to get my newsletters and pre-release content. And don't forget to also comment below. I'm always listening to your comments. So thank you again. I really appreciate it. And I will see you in the next tutorial.